Hi, I'm Warren Ely with Ely Hose Reels, and I'm going to demonstrate the assembly procedure for our garden hose reels. Now, every hose reel comes with a very detailed step-by-step -step instruction manual. Don't be intimidated by the number of pages or the number of steps. The assembly process really isn't that bad. It doesn't matter if you're mechanically inclined or not, you'll be able to put this hose reel together. Having said that, let's get started. Your hose reel will arrive in a box like this. The big logo is on the front. There is no logo on the back. To open the box, you want to lay it down and have the logo facing upward. Then you want to open the end by breaking loose the glued end flaps. Once the end is opened, grab the cardboard sleeve and slide the parts trays out of the box. Then lay the contents out for assembly. The hose reel flange and drum assembly consists of two main components, the front flange and the back flange, and they're held together with three screws that are included in the clamp shell enclosure. The front flange has three equidistant holes for attaching it to the back flange, a large opening for your garden hose to feed through, a rectangular opening for the hose strap assembly, and an extruded base for the crank handle. The back flange is a solid flange with three equidistant pre-installed nuts for attaching it to the front flange. The extra capacity kit consists of a four inch drum spacer, a long aluminum axle, three long screws, and a hex key wrench. The three screws that came with your hose reel in the clamshell will not be used. If your kit contained these four items, three flange nuts and one cage nut, you can discard them as they won't be needed for the installation. Step one is to line up the three embedded nuts on the back flange with the three channels on the inside of the spacer. Next, take the front flange and line up these three holes with the channels in the spacer. It doesn't matter which hole lines up with which channel. Now take one of the three long screws that came in the kit and insert it into one of the holes. It should slide down through the aligned channel and onto the embedded nut of the back flange. Then take the wrench and start threading the screw into the nut. Do not tighten firmly until you get the other two screws started. Okay, with all three screws started, go ahead and tighten them down firmly. Now it's time to attach the crank handle. Using the hex key wrench provided, remove the pre-installed screw from the crank handle center post. With the front flange facing up, insert the crank handle post into the extruded base from above and insert the screw from below. Thread the screw into the handle. Using the hex key wrench, be sure to tighten down firmly. Then, using the same hex key wrench, loosen the two pre-installed screws on the base of the arm assembly. Once you have both screws loosened, you'll be able to remove them completely using your fingers. To install the extra capacity kit, we're going to replace this axle by removing all four of these screws and loosening this bottom one just three rotations. Take the hex key wrench and fully remove all four of the screws that clamp the short axle to the arm. The first three screws are all the same length, and the fourth screw is slightly longer. Once you have all four top screws removed, take your hex key wrench and loosen the bottom screw just three rotations. One, two, and three. Now remove the short axle from the arm. Each arm has a small round post that is designed to line up with the holes in the axle. These posts are designed to hold the axle secure and keep it in its proper place. Make sure the posts are fully and properly seated in the holes before reinserting the screws. Once you have a tight fit, insert one of the nuts into the top hex-shaped pocket. Take care to insert the nuts flat edge first into the pockets. They are nylon insert nuts and you want the rounded nylon edge facing outward. Hold the nut in place with your finger while inserting one of the three short screws from the other side. Remember that the three shorter screws go on the top clamp portion while the fourth longer screw goes into the hole in the main body of the arm. You can snug the screws down but don't tighten firmly until you have all four screws started. Continue reinserting the remaining screws. Once you have all the screws started, you can go ahead and tighten down all four top screws. Then re-tighten the bottom screw that you had loosened three rotations.
Now position the arm assembly against the base assembly and line up the holes in the base with the threaded holes on the arm. Then take one of the screws you just removed from the arm and from the bottom side of the base feed it through one of the holes and into the arm. Thread it on a few rotations and then do the same with the second screw. Now with both screws started, take the large end of your hex key wrench, feed it through the holes in the base and tighten each screw down firmly. Now take the male end of the supplied inlet hose and feed it through the back end of the axle until it just shows out the front end of the axle. Now slide the flange and drum assembly all the way onto the reel's axle. Make sure you slide it on back flange first so that the front flange with the crank handle faces forward. Next, take the hose strap assembly and feed the nylon strap through the rectangular opening and push the assembly into place. Next, install the cam lever brake by making sure the tab on the brake aligns with the notch in the front flange. The gooseneck portion of the brass swivel can be rotated in either direction to make it easier to install on the hose reel. Now it's time to attach the gooseneck swivel to the inlet hose. Make sure the o-ring gasket is in place. Then pull a little bit more of the inlet hose through the axle so you can attach the brass swivel. Hand tighten firmly. You can use a pair of pliers if you want to secure the connection more firmly. And then this aluminum collar threads onto the axle. Make sure everything is pushed all the way on. Push the swivel and inlet hose back onto the axle. Make sure the gooseneck is not hitting the flange. And then thread the aluminum collar onto the axle and tighten to a snug fit. Be careful not to over tighten. Now it's time to attach your garden hose to the hose reel. Feed the female end of your garden hose through the hose strap. If you're unable to fit the fitting through the strap, there are two possible solutions. First, back the hose strap screw out to increase the size of the loop in the strap. Then pull on the hose strap to make sure the loop is as large as possible. If you still can't get the female fitting through, you'll need to feed the male end of your garden hose through the strap in the opposite direction and pull the full length of the hose through the strap. Now you're ready to attach it to the brass swivel. For right hand rewinding, feed the hose through the flange in this direction. For left hand rewinding, rotate the gooseneck to the opposite side of the flange, feed the female fitting through the strap in the opposite direction, and then feed the hose through the flange in this direction. Whether for left or right hand rewinding, the next step is to attach your garden hose to the swivel gooseneck and then rotate it toward the opening in the flange. Now reverse feed the excess hose back through the hose strap for a snug fit against the center drum. Then with a Phillips head screwdriver, tighten the hose strap screw until the strap tightens down onto the hose. It may take quite a few rotations to get the strap to a snug fit. Be careful not to over tighten. Now it's time to roll your hose up onto the reel. First, turn the cam lever brake to the off position. Then start reeling your hose in by cranking with one hand while level winding the hose onto the center drum with the other. Wrap the hose in a steady side to side motion, laying the hose against itself as you go. Once you get all the hose rolled up, turn the cam lever brake back to the on position. To set the cam lever brake, take a 7 16 inch wrench and loosen the adjustment nut until the weight of the watering tool on the end of the hose causes the reel to start unwinding by itself. Then tighten the nut a quarter turn at a time until the reel no longer unwinds by itself. You can adjust the nut to create just the right amount of drag to your liking. Now attach the inlet hose to the faucet and you're ready to use your hose reel. Be sure to have the cam lever on while pulling out the hose. This will prevent unwanted rollout. Then when you're ready to reel the hose back in, be sure to flip the brake to the off position to release the drag making it much easier to reel in. Then reset the brake to the on position so it's ready for the next time you use your hose reel. Well, there you go. Your hose reel assembly and installation are now complete. If you need any assistance or have any questions, you can visit our website 24 seven or reach out to our customer support team during our regular business hours. Thanks again for your purchase of Ely products. We hope you enjoy them for many years to come.